And that includes marriages, not just people dating. Are you kidding? A week before this guy was going to get married, I destroyed his marriage. Why does that make you feel good, though? Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Santagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Yes, today we're speaking to a man who reached out to talk about being a gay man who intentionally destroys heterosexual relationships by getting straight guys to sleep with him. In his email, he wrote, whether a straight guy has a wife or a girlfriend is irrelevant. I just really enjoy the challenge of disrupting and creating disharmony and hopefully destroying their relationship. We've got the guests on the line. Thank you so much for being on today. No problem. Um, it's my pleasure, actually. So I guess to kick this off, can you just kind of describe in your own words uh, what it is that you do exactly when it comes to targeting straight men in heterosexual relationships? Um, yeah. Do you want me to go like way back to my early 20s to, to how deep, you know, and profound it was? I, you want me to start that? Okay. that sounds like a good place to start. I think, um, yeah, going back as far as possible to kind of understand how this started and, and why you do this would be great. Okay. Um, so being a, being a like cocksucker in this world, it's kind of like if, if you could, if you, if you guys could put yourself in this situation, imagine being in a, going to a party where there are a hundred women and they're all hot, you know, perky tits and tight cunts. And they're really hot, but they're all lesbians. It would probably get kind of frustrating for you, you know? I could like, see that. You would not go home with anyone that night because they're all lesbians. So imagine that happening to you over and over and over and over again. It would get a little frustrating, you know? So early on, I was frustrated and I started to think that maybe uh, straight guys, straight people were um, to blame for that, whether that was, you know, whether that was true or not. And so I became very bitter and resentful and I thought, okay, I want to fuck with these people because all the guys that I want, want cunt, not cock. So I early on decided I was going to um, engage in like vengeful, you know, practices and, and do things, you know, t to retaliate basically. So how do you go about yeah. convincing a straight guy to sleep with you? How do we do it? Oh, that's easy. Even though I'm a faggot, I have a dick. And we all know that guys want blowjobs. They want a tongue in their asshole, whatever. So I was able to deploy different practices, you know, to, to get straight guys to come on over to the dark side. And that's real easy. That's honestly really easy to do. Because guys are dogs. We all know whether you're gay or straight, guys are dogs. And I just started to realize that it doesn't take much to get a guy, a straight guy, to indulge in sexual things that he may or may not even think about. What, what are some examples? Um... Okay, um, I do want to say this because I think it's important. I'm I live in San Francisco, and it's a town where people are obsessed with sex, and people are really into like 
expanding boundaries and pushing the limits. And I quickly learned that guys um, are frustrated with women. For example, certain like straight white guys who are six foot five basketball players are dating Asian women with small cunts and small mouths. And they're like, and they'll, they'll tell me, they're like, well, I, I can't fuck her throat. You know, her mouth is too small or she doesn't give good head or whatever. So I started to take notes on what straight guys had problems with in terms of their girlfriends and, you know, dates and stuff. So um, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm a six foot two fag. I've got a nice deep throat and an asshole and you can use me and all that stuff. So over time I learned what straight guys wanted and they couldn't get. And in a city like San Francisco where people are very, very sexually open-minded, it's not that difficult to um, uh, persuade or seduce a guy into doing things. It's just not. What percentage would you say that you are successful? Like if you see a straight guy and you're like, I'd like to have sex with that guy. How, like, what's the percentage that you'll be able to seduce this man? 80%. That's very high. Yeah. Is that because, is that because it's people that you think are sort of, like you said, already on the cusp of experimenting or open-minded in that sense, or you're just a skilled practitioner at getting people to come over to the dark side, as you say. All of you above. Hmm. I want to go back to what you just said. I think you said you were in your 20s or early 20s. So if you were going out all the time, surrounded by straight men that you couldn't have, like why not go to gay bars or try to put yourself in situations where there would be other gay men? I am glad you asked me that question because as a faggot and a sodomite, I do not enjoy sex with gay men because oh. they're a thing. Yeah, no, I don't at all. I've only I've only hooked up with around like three or four uh, faggots in my life. Ninety nine percent of the men I've hooked up with have been straight. Huh. Okay. And why aren't you attracted to other gay men? Because they're effeminate. Uh, okay. Not all gay yeah. men, though, are, you know. What's that? I said not all gay men are, you know, feminine. No, 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 of course not. But most of them are. It's kind of like, I think the best way to describe it is, would you prefer to have sex with a woman who's um, uh, like a dyke? who's more like a man or would you have, would you prefer to have sex with a woman who's more feminine? Well, as a straight man, I would say a feminine woman is what I would prefer. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't enjoy sex with most gay men just because they're effeminate and I'm not attracted to effeminate men or otherwise I would just fuck women, you know, Hmm. Because because they're feminine. But what about like a masculine gay man? Okay, those are few and far between. Okay, okay. So I we've heard about people. I I don't know if targeting is the right word, but or having more of an attraction to straight guys, trying to turn straight guys, sleep with straight guys. Understandable. For you, when did it? when did this other interest kind of come into play where it wasn't just about finding straight men and sleeping with them, but finding straight men in relationships with women and then seemingly, I guess, getting off on destroying their relationship or as you said, creating disharmony. Right. Okay. I'm glad you asked that question. Early on, um, when I was pursuing men, just men in general at a bar, at a club, wherever parties 
And, you know, there's a lot of straight guys that are cool with faggots like me. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're, you know, you're a nice guy. But it never, it never became um, sexual. They would never, like, come home with me or fuck me or have me suck their dick. And I'm like, this kind of sucks. This kind of, you know. It's like, again, if you were to go to a party where there were, like, 100 women and all of them were lesbians... You're not going to go home with any of them, right? Because they're all lesbians. And so I just started thinking, well, son of a bitch, this really kind of sucks. Because I'm chasing guys who don't want me, who don't even know I'm alive. And so it turned to bitterness and resentfulness. And then it turned into being uh, vengeful. And then I started thinking, you know what? Fuck these guys. Fuck these cons. I'm going to start to destroy some relationships. And that that early on, you know, started to manifest. And I started to think, I'm going to destroy their relationships because I'm not getting anything out of these guys, even though they're flirting with me or whatever. And it transition from being that to now it's it's basically turned into being uh, a sport and entertainment oh a sport you said yeah a sport oh so because I was going to ask that seems like a long time ago so if you're not bitter or vengeful anymore it's now it's just sort of a kink and an interest of yours it's a kink and it's a fetish, and I absolutely love turning uh, straight guys. Not you, you cannot make a straight guy become gay, as you know. The two of you know that. Both of you are straight. You would never become gay. However, there are men out there who, given the right circumstance, can cross over to the dark side and do shit with guys. And I use that to fuck up their relationships with women. But if, you, I, if you're like angry at straight men just for being straight, like, and you want to destroy their relationships because of that, like there's also a woman involved in that. Like, what did she do to have this like thing happen? You know? I'm glad you asked that question. I target women who are cunts. What's your criteria for that? For being a cunt? Who, a woman that doesn't like gay men or a woman that has control over her boyfriend. Guys, guys tell me things like, oh, my girlfriend, you know, is very controlling and, you know, she can't uh, handle this or handle that. And, and then they'll, they'll tell me things where I'm like, okay, so your, your girlfriend is a cunt. And then I will take that information and I will use it to destroy their relationship. S okay. So how are you doing this and how are you getting it out of these guys? Like, are these one night stands? Like what, when you pursue someone new, how much time is going into getting to know them and then getting them to open up for you to kind of understand, oh, their girlfriend or wife it isn't a nice person. <laughs> so I'm going like now I'm going full force and I'm going to destroy their relationship by fucking this yeah, guy. Well, yeah. It's a sliding, it's a sliding scale. If a woman is a, is just a full on cunt, I, they're like the best target. I actually, to be honest, I'm actually a nice faggot. You know, I'm a good cunt dumpster. I don't necessarily set out to destroy relationships of nice people. It's when a woman is a cunt and I think that she deserves, you know, this kind of treatment. I will deploy tactics to do that. And there's tons of ways of doing that. How do you get this information though, is what I'm asking. Like how much time are you spending with okay, men yeah. to, to understand that this is like a prime target for you because okay. of the woman? Yeah, number one, alcohol. Uh. 
alcohol is, you know, is the truth serum, right? So guys and women will tell me things while they're drinking that give me the information I need to fuck with them. Um, I, do you want me to give you some examples of things I've done? Sure. Um, there was a, there was a guy who was part of a team of runners in I don't know if you I don't know if you know San Francisco well at all, but you know Hate Street at all? I do. Yeah, I've been there. Okay. Awesome, and he and about thirty other runners came into this bar where I used to where I used to go to, and. We were just drinking and talking. I was buying them shots of whiskey, you know, getting him as, you know, as fucked up as possible. Because he was hot. He was so hot, I would eat the peanuts out of his shit. That's how hot he was. And um, he told me that his girlfriend did not know how to give blowjobs. And he hated that. And I told him, I said, well, dude, I can make you bust a nut in under three minutes with my, my my mouth. And so he got more and more interested. So I invited him to my home, which was around the corner from the bar. And he said, okay, let's do this. We're going to leave the bar, but you are not going to um, walk out with me. I don't want her to see you know, me leaving with you, but leave the bar and I'll follow you to your home and I did that we went to my place I sucked his dick made him come in about three four minutes and then we went back to the bar and he said do not go into the bar because uh, I don't want my girlfriend to see us together and I said I thought to myself well fuck that I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do that anyway so I walked into the bar with him and his girlfriend saw him coming with me into the bar. She got suspicious and they ended up having a massive blowout and they ended up breaking up. So why, so like you, and you get off on the fact that they broke up because of that? Yes. It's a fetish of mine. Okay. Are you going out alone to places when you do this? Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to invite my aunt or uncle with me. Yeah, so for sure. So about like a friend, like a buddy? Yeah, I'll go with a friend or a buddy or by myself, whatever. Do your friends know this is something that you typically do? Yes. And are they supportive of that? Yeah, they don't give a fuck. I mean, you know, given San Francisco, people are sexually fucked up, so... They don't really care. But you don't feel any type of like remorse for these types of things? I mean, it is kind of fucked up what you're doing, right? No, I don't feel any remorse at all. But like you don't feel bad for this woman that like you're purposefully going out of your way to try and destroy their relationship because of this thing, this grudge that you've been holding for many years? No, not at all. Do you think you'll continue doing this for a long time? Oh, yeah. I mean, early on, it was because of bitterness. And I help, you know, like straight guys responsible for being, uh, I mean, straight guys were responsible early on in my life, you know, for a lot of this. Now, it's just more for game or sport. And is this sort of your social life in a way like when you go out are you going out to pursue a guy or go to a bar specifically for this reason of trying to leave with someone that's straight and in a relationship absolutely so is a straight guy now not enough like he also needs to be in a relationship uh well yeah it's 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 the desire that he's in a relationship so that i can destroy it for sure and that includes marriages, not just people dating. Are you kidding? A week before this guy was going to get married, I destroyed his 
marriage. Why does that make you feel good, though? Um, I don't know. It's 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 a you know you know what a fetish is, right? Of course. Yeah, it's it's basically a fetish. So this guy, for example, you destroyed his marriage a week before his wedding. Do you then just is it like my job's done here and you kind of cut off communication or do you still talk to the guy after? Do you see well, these guys again? No, absolutely. It's my job is done. I am satisfied. I'm happy and my job is done. Now the women finding out about this, this feels like something that even the straight guy could keep a secret, but are you going out of your way to make sure the woman discovers it? Oh, fuck. Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Do, okay. Do you want me to tell you a couple of experiences I had in that regard? Sure. Yeah. I'd be curious to know like what you do. Cause you know, you could bring a guy back to your apartment, suck him off, but then it seems like you want to make sure the woman finds out somehow. Oh my God. Yes. The, I, the, the main goal is that the partner finds out. Um, there was a time where, for example, um, I had a, um, a roommate and he invited his girlfriend over, you know, you know, for drinks or, or whatever. And when he was in the bathroom, she told me, she's all, you know, I think, I think my boyfriend is bi curious. I said, is he bisexual? She says, no, I think he's bi curious. He just wants to explore. I'm like, oh, okay. That sounds cool. So you need to know that the more information I get from people, the more I can use that information to hurt them. So um, after she told me that, I ended up sucking his dick and eating his asshole out. And he felt a lot of guilt and shame. And I, the two, both of you are straight, right? Yeah. Right. So your girlfriends would probably know if you did something naughty with another woman, they might pick up on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So she picked up on the fact that he did something naughty and it festered for a while. And ultimately he confessed to her because he felt guilty. And the thing is, one of the things that I pride myself on is planting seeds in relationships so that it, flour it you know flourishes and hopefully causes discord in in their in their life. What kind of seeds? Like how did you plant like what what do you mean by that? Oh, just um like if a guy has a um for example a um a birthmark on his ass or he has a tattoo, you know, where you, normally people can't see it. For example, I hooked up with this one guy one time who had a tattoo on his lower abs, just above his dick. And the tattoo was lucky you, which is phenomenal. And he said to me, don't ever, uh, come up to me and talk to me if you see me on the streets. And a couple of weeks ago, I ran into him in the street with his girlfriend. And I went up to her and I said to her, Hi, hey, how's it going? And I said, uh, just wanted to let you know I'm the lucky one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. In front of him? In front of him. What did he say? Nothing. He was completely blown away. And I just said, hey, you know, I'm I'm the lucky one. And so I will do whatever's necessary to like cause discord or you know, like shit between couples. Nothing criminal, nothing uh violent, just in terms of 
using words and stuff like that. Do you not have any sort of, uh, like, want to be in a, in a relationship and, like, actually be, I don't know, just in a relationship? Because it sounds like you're pretty focused on destroying other people's relationships, but I was just wondering, like, you know, when it comes to your sexual interactions, is there any sort of desire for that, for, like, love or being in a relationship? I used to, I used to like really want to be in a relationship and I have been in a relationship with guys, but they've all been bisexual. So that's been kind of a challenge, you know, to deal with. Um, but I just, my, I've come to the conclusion that my fetish is destroying straight relationships and I'll do whatever I have to, to make that happen. So I know you said now it's, essentially just a fetish, but is there still any bitterness or anger that is fueling this fetish? Because it, it does feel very vengeful and angry still. To, I'll be honest with you. Early on, there was a lot of vengeance and bitterness and anger, but it has transformed over the years. And now it's primarily just for fun shits and giggles and entertainment. And I guess like Joe said that you just want to keep that going. You don't want to try to find someone and settle down. And doesn't any of this have to do with, like you said, having tried to settle down, but it, or being in a relationship, but it not working out. Like, could, is that fueling anything? Well, I mean, settling down with someone would be, would be cool, but it just hasn't happened. Um, it, it, it selling, you know, for a faggot to settle down with another faggot is pretty fucking difficult. It really is. And so in the meantime, I would just rather have fun and engage in entertainment by uh, causing discord with within straight relationships that's that's kind of where i get off it's almost like a head rush mm -hmm. but you know like but you can acknowledge that this is like not a good thing right um it's a good thing if the girl's a cunt and the guy's an asshole <laughs> i don't i don't do it to people who are nice but it sounds like these are people that you don't really know. Like you find out that, you know, you, one of the first things you said is like, my girlfriend is not good at giving head. Like, does that make her a cunt? Like, I don't know about that. It doesn't make her a cunt, but it makes her a cunt to him. I don't care. But I've had, you know, I've had straight guys say, yeah, you know, I'm six foot five and a white basketball player. And my girlfriend is a four foot nine Asian girl and you know she can't deep throw me um, but he still might love her for other reasons and, she and might... chooses to stay with her right <laughs> yeah. well yeah of course that's fine but my fetish is breaking them up right yeah um what about any gay men listening who would say so like you said it's it's very difficult for a gay man to settle down with a gay man but is that just your experience? Like, wouldn't there be plenty of gay men out there who are happily settled down or married? No, the ninety percent of gay men will never settle down with another gay man. It just, it just, it's not going to happen. What are you basing that on? Uh, experience. Right. Yeah. So we're saying, like, in your experience, and you, the town that you live in is in your words like very sexually experimental and whatnot but for the whole gay community i mean i think that you know there's a lot of gay married couples okay can you repeat that well i'm just saying like your experience you're saying like 90 percent of uh gay men won't settle down with another gay man but like you know that's in your experience it's not necessarily like the truth like it's like you know what you have witnessed i guess um but we're just saying that like obviously that is possible that that could happen um right 
Well, well, yeah. Anything. I mean, anything is possible. Sure, absolutely. But if you were to seriously ask every gay man on the planet, ninety percent of gay men are going to tell you that they do not have a relationship. You know, like straight people have, and um, a lot of them. You know, and I experiences myself and a lot of them have told me that they you know fall for straight guys and they and it's only you know like they're hurt by that or feel, feel offensive by that and it just it's it's kind of weird but it's true that gay guys don't have the fulfillment of relationships that most straight people have. Do you think there's a lot of other gay men who are doing what you're doing? I have no idea. You know, it's something that's important to me that a lot of people don't think about water. I'm talking about the water that we drink. Having safe, clean water to drink is not something that we have to worry about, but I'm going to read you the stat and it's a little scary. Be ready. According to extensive research by the environmental working group, three out of four homes in America have harmful contaminants in its tap water. That is terrifying. I don't want to have to worry about that for myself, for my family, for my young child. And I know that you guys don't want that either. That's why you guys have to check out AquaTrue. AquaTrue purifiers use a four stage reverse osmosis purification process and their countertop purifiers work with no installation or plumbing. So it's super easy to set up and it removes 15 times more contaminants than those ordinary, you know, the pitcher filters that you could just buy in the supermarket. This is cleaning your water and filtering your water way better than any of those things that you can buy. Plus, something that I love about their filters is that they're affordable and they're long lasting. So you don't have to swap out these filters every two to three months, which honestly, I always forget about. Like nine months will pass and I'm like, oh, I forgot that we have to change the filter and the thing. AquaTrue's filters last anywhere from six months to two years. So you don't have to worry about it. The water tastes fantastic as well. If you have pets, you can give this water to your pets. You can use this in coffee, tea. This will change all of the water that you consume in your home for the better. And some people call me crazy when I'm like, my water literally tastes better now, but like come over and do a taste test and I like guarantee you will see the difference. I notice it, it's delicious. And I just, I feel better knowing that myself and my family are getting truly purified water without the contaminants. And AquaTrue comes with a 30 day money back guarantee it makes a great gift for someone as well, if you're in need. And uh, today, OPL listeners can receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. So if you want to check them out, just go to AquaTrue.com. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com. And you will get 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier. That's AquaTrue.com. Use the promo code OPL. OPL promo code 20% off and uh, check out what they have to offer and make sure that you guys are putting the best quality water into your bodies. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. And I quickly want to talk about relationships because I feel like there's this big misconception that relationships should be easy and that so many people are in these relationships that are effortless. And that's not the case. And I'm someone that promotes my family life and my marriage a lot, I would say. And it takes a lot of work. And I just want to put that out there that uh, what you see is you don't see the process of maintaining these relationships always and the work. And for me personally, uh, it's something that I've talked a lot about in therapy. And it doesn't necessarily mean that things have to be bad and that you're trying to fix something, but relationships they change, they evolve. You go through different phases of life with people. And this could be partners, this could be friends. And it's been nice to be able to use therapy personally to talk through these different transitions, these life changes, and make sure that I know that I'm doing the most to better myself and be the best partner that I could be 
also the best dad that I can be. Uh, and I really do thank therapy for giving me those tools uh, to, to be the best partner and, and be the best uh, person that I could be in the family setting, which is super important to me. And I know a lot of you might have tried therapy. You might be thinking about trying therapy and you guys should definitely give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, which is nice. And it is designed to be super flexible, which I know is important uh, in our busy lives. You want to make sure that therapy is suited to your schedule so that you can truly get the most out of it. And that is exactly what BetterHelp has to offer. No commute, uh, no waiting rooms, which is very nice. And to get started, all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you will be matched with a licensed therapist. Another really good perk of BetterHelp is if you're not feeling, you know, the first therapist or even the first few therapists you get matched up with, you can easily switch. So there can be a trial process of finding the right person, the person that you truly feel comfortable uh, opening up to. And I think that's really important that you're so easily able to navigate that and try different people uh, before you find the licensed therapist that, you know, sticks for you. So huge, huge perk of BetterHelp as well. And you guys can visit betterhelp.com slash OPL. You can get 10% off your first month. And that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash OPL to get 10% off your first month. It is, I will say, you know, we kind of always reference the emails that we get. And there are a lot of emails of, you know, I'm... I'm an openly gay man, but I'm only attracted to straight men, or I only try to date straight men. Um, I think we've even done an episode similar to that back when we started this show. So I know that that is something within the community of being attracted to straight men or targeting straight men. Um, the reason I think we reached out to you above some of those is this other angle of this enjoyment of, of ruining the relationships. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I w was wondering if you like ever came across someone who, you know, had that same interest as you, but no. Honestly, the reason I haven't is because I don't really talk about it. Um, it's not something that like, oh, I don't leave my house in the morning and say, hey, are there any faggots out there that destroy straight people's relationships? It's not something that I, you know, like talk about openly mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean there aren't other guys out there that do that but um the thing is it's it's become i want you guys to know this it's become a fetish of mine it's become a sport and entertainment right and, i mean there are people who have you know sort of fetishes uh and maybe there's like parts of that fetish that they choose not to indulge in because they know that it's not right you know like i don't think going out of your way to break up you know relationships like even if that is something that you're interested in to be actively like i'm going to go out and do that um it, there's i, I mean I've, you've already answered this question but you don't really feel any sort of remorse for anything that like for for any of that happening so is it is it relationship based or is it you do you like hurting people like emotionally like is, is there other parts of your personality where this kind of comes out as well it's a lot of it is emotionally based and there's still a part of me that wants to get back you know like in terms of vengeance uh because you have to understand i have been hurt many times by straight guys who have um, you know, played with me and, um, I don't know what the best way to explain it, but have, have you ever been with, have you ever met a woman who has I, fucked with you? I, I've, I, so in my experience personally, of course I've met multiple women that I thought were interested in with me and have led me on or whatever. Uh, and then nothing comes of that. And that could be frustrating or upsetting, but that doesn't make me like have this deep vengeance for a number of years or anything like that. And I, it sounds like you're 
almost blaming straight men for being straight. Like if they're not interested in you because of their orientation, I don't know if that's, you know, you're, you're, you're saying like you've been hurt by them because they're straight, right? Well, no, it's not so much of that. It's mostly, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't target like straight people just because they're straight people. I target the straight guys who have fucked with me. You know what I mean? But you said this runner just like walked in there and this is like a target of yours. You said that earlier, right? I'm sorry? The runner that you were describing earlier, you were like, this guy walked in and then he was just, I was buying him shots and he was talking to me about his girlfriend. Right. So like, that's not a person who's like wronged you. Well, I mean, um, 99% of the time it's guys that have been very um, hurtful to me that I target. I don't even, I don't even target like nice couples. Like, you know, like, you know, like you just meet a nice couple at a bar or a club or at a party and, you know, like you just leave them alone because they're nice. I don't target those people. I target like assholes and cunts. But so what qualifies as hurting you or being mean to you because if you're kind of going out and this is a sport and you're meeting guys and you're buying them drinks and getting them drunk like in at what point are they being hurtful to you that you decide okay i'm gonna go after this guy because it, it feels oh. like you're just going out kind of socially to kind of find these people and target them oh i mean like there are there are i mean you you would not know this because you're a straight guy and i'm a you know i'm a total cum dumpster but like there are guys out there who will uh, be like um, who will lead me on and tell me that oh if I didn't have a girlfriend I would so hook up with you I would fuck you and that kind of thing. So there are guys out there who will um, say stuff that is very offensive and hurtful. And how is that hurtful to you, though? Isn't that hurtful to like his girlfriend? Isn't it kind of nice to you in a way? Well, no, some of these guys don't even have girlfriends. Oh, you're saying in general? Yeah, just in general. So what's hurtful to you is a guy that isn't immediately willing to have sex with you? Well, yeah. In other words, OK, we all know the term cock tease, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. OK. So if a guy's bring a cock tease and he gets you to buy him drinks and, you know, he's telling you all this shit, that's not cool. That's that's like being a straight man, though, because, like, that's mostly what happens, I think, with straight men who go to the bar and they buy women drinks and stuff. And then it's like nothing comes of that. I mean, it's it's kind of like the argument that straight women make it's like if you want to buy me a drink that's one thing that doesn't necessarily mean that i have to sleep with you well no of course of course not but what I'm, that's still not cool though like to you somebody it's not but it, i mean you're doing that no but isn't it kind of what you want to happen only sexually speaking i don't want to i don't want somebody to buy me drinks and spend money on me i mean that's not what my goal is yeah, but um, emotionally, like, you're emotionally using them for your own personal, like, gain. Like, you're fetish. You're like, I don't care what happens. These people are going to be destroyed. Your wedding's in a week. I'll fuck that up. And I don't care because it made me feel good. Like, that that would be kind of worse than someone being a cock tease, no? Absolutely. And, that, and therein lies my fetish. And that's why I'm fucked up because I do enjoy destroying relationships. Okay. I guess it's like, I guess we're just trying to understand the hurtful nature of it, but it, I, I to us, at least hearing this, it feels like there's kind of a low, like low standards for someone hurting you, you know, like where it's just sort of like, maybe they buy you a drink or you buy them a drink and then they say they don't want to sleep with you. And for you, that kind of registers as like, well, this is a shitty person. Now I'm targeting them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so then kind of any been... straight guy's a target really, <laughs> unless they no, no. let you well, suck no, them off people, right away. 
I'm not gonna go after the fat fuck who's greasy and disgusting. I mean, it's just have you ever been to a bar and you like connected with a woman and she's hinted, you know, like that she likes you and you're thinking, I'm gonna go home with her and I'm gonna fuck her, and then you realize she's just playing you. I think most straight men have that experience. A bunch of times, yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, okay. totally. It's kind of the same thing. And yeah, then Yeah, but um, so, but that happens to everybody. Like and but no one is necessarily going out of their way to destroy relationships because they thought they were going to go home with someone and they ended up either misreading the situation or even if the person was being a cock tease or just like, you know, innocent flirting or whatever, uh most people though are like, well, I'm not going to be vengeful because of that. Well, you know, but that's what, but that's what makes me different from the normal person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. No, I mean, yes, and yeah. You've you made that clear. And that's, why con- contact, and that's why I contacted you because it's like, well, okay, I, you know, destroy straight relationships. Can I? Can I tell you guys with this really one relationship that I destroyed that was phenomenal? Do you, sure. Can I tell you? All right. So. I was a regular at a bar for a good couple of years. And there was this guy, hot as fuck, hot as fuck. So hot that I would eat the peanuts out of his shit. That's how hot he was. And he is an electrician. And he would come to the bar and I'd go to the bar and we would talk. I'd make him laugh because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't told you any jokes, but I have a lot of really good jokes and I'd make him laugh and took two years to, you know, become friends with him. And it turns out that his wife is a pole dancer and they had three kids and he confided in me that they were having marital problems and all that stuff. And anyway, so, um, at the time I didn't have a car. I do now, but, I didn't. And I said, Hey, could you, um, give me a ride home? I really, it was like 103 degrees. And he's like, yeah, sure. And so he gave me a ride home. I invited him in. I'm like, do you like, uh, what, what, what's your drink? And he said, tequila. I said, well, let's get a bottle of tequila. He says, all right. So we got a bottle of tequila, went to my place. And one thing led to another, you know, you know, the drill, you know, you said, you start drinking and, and, um, next thing I knew we were in bed. He told me to turn around and he said he wanted to fuck the shit on me. And he said, I'm going to do everything to you that my wife doesn't let me do. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Are you kidding me? I was like, he had told me before, so I'm like, he's going to skull fuck me, nail me my ass, and I'm, all this stuff. And he says, uh, we're just going to have a lot of fun, and blah, blah, blah. So we ended up hooking up that night until about 4 in the morning. He left at 4.30 in the morning. He got home at 5 in the morning. And... Uh, I hated his wife because she was basically a cunt. And he uh, told me that uh, she figured out what was going on, which wasn't difficult to figure out. I mean, if your husband comes home at five in the morning and he's got tequila on his breath and he's got shit on his cock, hello, right? You're going to pretty much figure out what's going on. And uh, then we went to the bar a couple of days later where we were regulars and she just gave me these dirty looks and I just like smiled and they ended up getting divorced and they had three kids. And that made me so fucking happy. But you don't feel bad for like the kids even? What's up? I said, you don't even feel bad for like the kids though. Cause now they don't like their parents are like divorced now. Um, no, not really. 
I don't. All right. So before we, we wrap this up, uh, because we do have to go, is there anything you want to say to the people listening that are appalled by this and just think that this is the worst behavior that someone could do? Are you, am I, am, am I going down in history at OPO with the worst behavior ever? We don't know that, but I'm sure there will be people who don't agree with, you know, what you're doing. Right. Um, okay. A couple of closing comments. First, um, hey, Joseph, is your, your last name is Holy Cat, right? Yep. That's phenomenal. I love that. <laughs> I think that's great. Because I'm Italian too, so um, I can't even I can't even think of you without eating a cannoli. <laughs> All right. Something something hard on the outside, but creamy on the inside, and sweet as fuck. All right. Thanks for the. <laughs> that's your first closing comment. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, I mean, I just, I just hope, you know, you guys don't hate me because of what I do. I mean, we don't really even know you. I mean, we're not here to pass judgment. We're, you know, trying to ask questions so we can understand kind of why you do what you do. Um, and I mean, you answered all those questions and we appreciate you coming on and being so honest. I, I don't know how many people are doing what you do or, or agree with, you know, your I guess the way that your mind works when it comes to these sort of things. Uh, but the only thing that we can do is ask the questions and appreciate you being so honest. So, and you did that. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Like Joe said, we, we appreciate it. Uh, the show is nothing without guests coming on and <laughs> bearing their souls and being as transparent as they could possibly be. So we do appreciate that. Last thing I wanted to ask you guys is I'm starting to write a book about my um, escapades and if you guys would love to help me promote it please let me know all right we'll let you know all right all right have a good one you too bye well, bye we'll let you know <laughs> i uh i don't know what just went on i just i don't know what just happened I, he he was very honest about it. He told yeah. us what happened. But for me, the the one thing that kept flashing through my mind as he was talking is it felt like a mentality similar to incels that we've spoken to. Why? Because it's this feeling of someone I've else is to blame. Wronged. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've been wronged, and it could be petty, but it creates this deep seated vengeance, like. I know he's calling it a fetish, but I think we were kind of able to lead him to a point of, I guess, admitting that there still is this bitterness. This It just feels so intentionally harmful. It feels like there's that it's hate-fueled. Yes. I don't think there's any way around that. So I think he's still carrying this of course. Like, to blame. And like you said, blaming who? Straight guys that are straight aren't lining up to like let you suck their dicks? I mean... Is that hurtful or is that just, <laughs> I don't know, how straight yeah, guys I are? I, yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's a little confusing, to be honest. But, I mean, that's why I was asking the questions that I was. And I think, you know, he, I mean, again, like that one example he gave where there was a, a husband and wife and they ended up getting divorced. They had three kids. And it's like, you don't even feel bad for the kids in that situation? It's like, yeah. no, I don't. It's like, all right, what do you say to a person who just doesn't feel bad about stuff that most people would feel bad about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the people involved felt bad, but he's just like, no, I actually kind of enjoy it. Um, I think to he's me, able to just shut it off like when it gets to the point of real-life consequences for the people after. He, he He's just like walking away. You know that scene in The Dark Knight, like when the Joker just walks away from the hospital that explodes? Yeah. Like he's just, he's walking away and like on to the next, and that's it. I guess. I mean, uh, listen, at the end of the day, it's not like this dude is solely to blame. There's still guys out there that are willing to hook up with this guy, even though they're married. So, I mean, mm -hmm. those people have to have some sort of accountability as mm -hmm. well. So, obviously, 
this can all be avoided if the man is like, I'm not fucking doing this anyway. Like there's mm-hmm. a, there's a 100% defense against this thing, <laughs> but this guy is going to make, you know, valiant attempts to, to break up your relationship. Um, and yeah. I, I mean, anything that is, you know, you're intentionally hurting someone is one thing, right? It's not good, but intentionally hurting someone is one thing. Enjoying it to the mm-hmm. point where this it gives you sexual pleasure uh, to intentionally hurt somebody in any context, not just this one, to me, is like evil. Yeah. yeah. You know, like it's not nice. Like it's fucked up. Yeah, and I'm, there's, I'm sure plenty of gay guys out there that just want to sleep with straight men for their pleasure. And Which it probably fine. happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. But it's what's hard to wrap your head around in this case is everything for him that gives him the pleasure. It's like it's beyond sexual gratification of being with a straight man. It's yeah. the destruction, yeah. chaos that he causes. And there's like the, the like... I know he's going to be listening to this, so, but it's like the, the, the intent behind it is so like clear, you know, because of things he said, he's like, I buy them whiskey shots. I get them to open up to me and make them feel safe. And then they say the stuff about their wife. And then I'm like, I'll do this. And then, then it's like, this guy thinks he has a secret. And then he's like, no, I'm going to completely destroy your mm-hmm, life now. Mm-hmm. Like that's not normal. It's extremely premeditated. And yeah. I think that for him, I don't know if he's willing to fully confront this or, but just sort of like the reasons behind this, it, it feels like it's so easy for him to just check the box of, as he said, this person's a cunt, this person hurt me. They were mean to me. Like he, it feels like everyone he comes across is likely to check that box. And anyone he wants to have sex with is he's going to find a way for them to check that box and it's probably not going to take much. That's what I gathered. It's also very interesting that it's, he's very quick to call people asshole and cunts. Uh, but then uh, is it more difficult to like not see that the thing that you're doing is actually 10 times worse than like a wife being a nag or, a, or not you know, giving the best blow job in the <laughs> <yeah>. world <laughs> <laughs> or being four, nine and, a four nine Asian like what was he saying? Like I was like, all right, but yeah. uh, at the end of the day, this person remains anonymous. We I'm not passing ju- I mean, I guess I am passing judgment in a way. Like it's not I think, I think we can disagree with Yeah, it's not it's not that, something that, that I think is good. Like I think this is negative. I think that if a lot of people acted this way, there would be fucking chaos. Like mm-hmm. it's not good. And I but again, there is to to his defense. There is a 100% rate of defense against this thing, yeah, yeah. and it's just not hooking up with this fucking dude at the bar. Right. So, like, you could also do that <laughs> at the end of the day. Right, right. So, he's not, he's not uh, you know, he's nothing got we a, heard is it's not criminal. He's not forcing anyone no, to yeah, do this. No, yeah, no, nothing. It's, it's, you know, it's, these the, people are choosing to sleep with him. He and does then, have a partner in crime every time. So right, it's, right. it's not just him that, you know, whatever. It's But it is, the thing that is sticking with me is the fact that it's like, they're getting divorced right before their wedding. They have three kids and I love every second yes. of it. Yeah. That is strange to me. Yeah. So that is like, okay, that's come on. Uh, but we do appreciate him coming on and, and being honest about his experience. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. I don't know where else you're going to get that type of interview. So <laughs> it is what it is. This is OPL, I guess. So, uh, but for anyone out there that would like to come on the show, uh, hit us up. Our email is OPL at gmail.com. Uh, send us your story and we'll get back to you. Yeah, follow us on Instagram and TikTok for a bunch of clips from episodes. That's at OPL Podcast. And you could support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash OPL show. Yep, that is all. See you guys next time. <laughs>